Well, welcome everyone to this session on uh, wireless analyzers. My name is Ben Miller. You can uh, get in contact with me uh, via Twitter at Ben underscore sniff Wi-Fi. Um, we're not going to be able to do the presentation that I want to do uh, today, which is uh, for a couple of you who know me on Twitter that I'm a big college football fan. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to do something that's perhaps a little bit more informative for you all. Uh, that presentation I'll save for, uh, for when I'm at home, uh, bug, my, uh, bug my relatives with it. Uh, so, uh, so what we want to do today is uh, talk a little bit about wireless analyzers, specifically wireless protocol analyzers. I'm a big evangelist for wireless analyzers. I find that uh, they're, they're really one of the most underused things in the world of Wi-Fi. I, I find that if I were to choose three things that are really underused in Wi-Fi that could really help out people's performance, I would say uh, one of them is wireless USB adapters. There's a lot of older Wi-Fi devices that can be updated with a, a little relatively inexpensive wireless USB adapter. Uh, also, to speak to Devin Aiken's 10 talk yesterday, if you want to go 5 gigahertz, I've had some success using wireless USB adapters to get 2.4 gigahertz devices supporting 5 gigahertz. Uh, so I really like the wireless USB adapters. I'm a big fan of directional antennas. Chuck just gave a presentation in here talking about the Levi's Stadium deployment, talking about some of the directional antennas they use. That's something that can really help Wi-Fi performance. And, uh, and the third thing that can really help Wi-Fi performance, I find, is uh, just understanding what you're seeing through the air. That's, that's what a wireless analyzer does. Uh, it is something that captures frames that are going through the air. It's capturing Wi-Fi traffic only. Um, I, I, I find that there, there's a few different uses for, for why you might want to use a protocol analyzer. We, we had a presentation in here yesterday uh, talking about why you might use a protocol analyzer, but uh, unfortunately the person giving the presentation, Jay Bothello, he got injured, he couldn't show up here. And, and so as I watched the presentation, I, I, I didn't know if everything came, up, uh, came across clearly of, of what the benefit is. Uh, so the, the, the big things that protocol analyzers give you is a great ability to analyze your performance, to, to see if your wireless channel is presently performing well. Also, far more important than that, what I like is the ability to get a, at least a little bit of a read on whether your network can handle stress. Uh, I find in a lot of cases, Wi-Fi works fine day to day. You know, I, I think for this conference that we've been having here, at least in my opinion, the Wi-Fi has been pretty good. But I find a lot of times when networks get put under stress, they can, they can break down, uh, you know, university lecture halls, arenas, convention centers, uh, some, some places like that have, have this problem. And uh, so, so I find using a uh, protocol analyzer can be a, a, a great way to either see how the network's doing now or to try to get an indication of whether it will hold up. And we'll talk about a few of the things that, that, that you can do uh, uh, towards that. We'll, we'll talk about some of the things you can do. And I'll also talk about what my favorite tool is, what, what my favorite analyzer is. It's an analyzer that you got with the uh, uh, WLPC gift bag. You got a uh, trial version of it. Uh, the other big thing that I like to use wireless analyzers for is to analyze devices. If you know that there is a specific type of device that you're going to have to support, uh, barcode scanners in a warehouse, iPads at a school, whatever it is. Um, it, it can be really helpful to just understand how that device works, how, how it can be similar or different from the devices that you might have done surveying or testing or, uh, or planning with. And, uh, you know, I just mentioned on the page there uh, a few different things you can look for, a few different things you can, uh, you can do to analyze. Uh, so those are the big things that I, that I would recommend using a wireless analyzer for. I, I would say if, if you have performance issues, if someone's saying the network's not very fast or devices are dropping or, or whatever it is, I find using an analyzer is a great way to look at that. Um, and, and then uh, just for device analysis, to try to see what the behavior of a, of a device is. Um, so the, the, the session that we're in right now is, is really all about 
um, kind of comparing analyzers, and, and so I'll go through the list of uh, the analyzers that I compare, and, and hopefully I don't offend any people. This is, this is certainly a little bit of my opinion. It is my professional opinion, but uh, it, it's definitely kind of my opinion on uh, what's out there. So there's, there's three analyzers that are relatively prominent that I would kind of categorize as contenders. I would say that all three of these analyzers have some good things about them. Uh, I, I would say that you know, there are certain things about them that at least cause them to appeal a little bit less to me. There, there's a couple other products that appeal a little bit more to me. Uh, one of the analyzers is ComView for Wi-Fi. Uh, there's a whole presentation on ComView for Wi-Fi tomorrow. I would encourage you to go to it. Devin Aiken, the guy who did the uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz is dead talk yesterday is, is gonna lead you through that. Uh, and uh, ComView for Wi-Fi, the big benefit of it is it's a relatively low cost analyzer. It's a sub $1,000 US analyzer. So, so that, that can be kind of nice. But um, it, it, what, what I find is just, it's, it's maybe not quite as slick, maybe not quite as fluid as allowing me to do the device analysis that I can do with other analyzers. And there, there's really, uh, you know, there's really no analyzer that compares, in my opinion, to, to kind of my preferred choice for the performance analysis. So, uh, Combi for Wi-Fi, an, an okay option, a, a low-cost option, but um, but not necessarily uh, uh, the one that I would choose. The, the second one up there uh, th that I would qualify as a contender, that I would call a contender, really, th that that's the one that's a little bit more personal preference than professional preference. It's Metageek IPA. A lot of people really like Metageek IPA. The, the big reason why I don't use it is I'm just much more of a numbers guy than a graphics guy. I, I'm not that big into pie charts and, and, and things like that. So, so, so when I do an analysis, when I do a capture, I wanna see numbers. I, I wanna see a little number with a percent or, or a little number uh, beside my device or, or beside what I'm looking for. So, uh, so, so that, that one's a little bit more of a personal preference, but uh, a, a very nice analyzer. Metageek does some really cool stuff with uh, analyzing channel time that, that no other product does. So I, I really, really like the channel time analysis. Uh, it, it's just, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not as big a fan of the graphical rather than the numbers-based analysis. Uh, and then the, the third contender that I have up there is Wireshark. I, I gave the little talk about Wireshark yesterday. It's a, it's a suitable analyzer, but the, the reality is it's, you, you know, look, it's, it's an open source tool. With Wireshark, the, the trade-off is, is just time for money. If, if you have time to spend, but you need to save money, Wireshark is a great choice. If you need to save time, if time is most important to you and you need to do your tasks quickly, uh, then I, I would say Wireshark is, is probably a less proper choice. It's, it's, it's free, but it's, it's almost certainly gonna take you a little bit more time to do what you need to do. Um, and and so, so those are all, all products that people use, all products that can work, but definitely the products that I would recommend are, are the two listed up here. Uh, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer and Wild Packets OmniPeak. You get trial versions of both of these just in case uh, you, you know, you're not familiar with them or you have not chosen them, uh, or sorry, you have not uh, uh, purchased an analyzer yet. Uh, for those of you that are possibly looking to you, you know, get a, a longer term license, Last I checked, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer had right around a, a $4,000 uh, retail price. Uh, Wild Packets OmniPeak has differing options ranging from $1,300 up to $6,000. Um, actually, if you're, Wild Packets OmniPeak is both a wired and wireless analyzer. If you're like me and you just focus on wireless, I find you really only need the basic version of Wild Packets OmniPeak. Um, Wild, Wild Packets is nice enough to uh, give me a, a yearly uh, version of it because I, I, I do some training, I, I teach some classes, so uh, they're, they're nice enough to, to kind of give me a yearly license for it. Um, but uh, I, I really never use any of the features beyond just the basic features. That, that's really all I, I use for wireless. So, whether it's the $1,300 version, there's a $3,000 version that gives you some more graphical stuff. 
Um, I find either one of those is, uh, is, a, is a pretty good option there. Um, and, uh, and as far as what they're good for, um, it's, it's kind of what's listed there on the page. I find uh, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer is a really good analyzer for analyzing performance. I find that Wild Packets Omni Peak is a, a really good analyzer for uh, analyzing uh, devices. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't really get the screen to a resolution that would allow you to see the numbers that I wanted to display. So I can't really go through the demos that I was planning for, for this presentation. Um, you, you know, I, I'll, uh, I, I, I think what I'll try to do is, is maybe I'll put out some uh, videos online after this to, to try to explain a little bit more. But, uh, you know, we, we just have limitations when it comes to the, uh, to the video uh, resolution. So I, so I can't go through as much as I, as I wanted to there. Uh, to give you a little bit of an idea, though, of, uh, of, of what you might be seeing in either one and in, in what you might be doing, uh, Air, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer is, is the one that's a little bit more appropriate for performance analysis. Um, th there's, there's a few different activities that can be really useful to, to try to optimize your performance. And, and one of them, uh, the one I wanted to demonstrate, and I'll, I'll at least bring up the software and I'll at least try to show you it a little bit here, is something that Mike Leibovitz talked about yesterday in his 10 talk, which is the idea that for the most difficult environments, uh, for the environments where uh, it, it, you know, it's either gonna be tough because of the number of users or the amount of movement or the fact that you have a little bit less consistent device, uh, trying to get the transmit power matching on a client device and on an access point can be really, really helpful. Uh, there, there's a lot of applications that require both upload and download. If you don't have that matching transmit power, it can be uh, a, a little bit difficult for those applications to operate. And um, Air, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer is uh, a, an application that, that can allow you to kind of look at that. And so I'll, uh, I'll bring it up right now just to kind of show you what uh, Air Magnet looks like and, and what you would look for in Air Magnet. It'll take me uh, just a moment to get it started here. And so in uh, what you're basically looking for if you're trying to check transmit power is you're looking to compare the retry rate on the uplink with the retry rate on the downlink. That tends to be a pretty good indication of whether access point power matches client power. It's often very, very difficult to get information about precisely what a client device's transmit power is. I cannot look on Apple's support site or anywhere else on Apple's documentation and find out what the transmit power of my iPhone 5 here is. Uh, I, I can guess, I, I can do some degree of testing. Uh, you know, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15 decibels. I, I've been told by other people that I trust that the transmit power can go up and down from there, that, that in certain situations it'll go as high as 25 decibels. But, um, but it's, it's really hard to know exactly what the transmit power is on the device. And uh, so that makes it really hard to set up an infrastructure, set up access points that are gonna match that transmit power, that are gonna make it so that uh, applications that go in both directions are going to work. And uh, Air Magnet can be really, really helpful with that, uh, with Air, Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer. Um, again, my apologies for the uh, screen resolution issues here. Uh, but if I uh, go to the infrastructure screen, um, you know, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't write down a note about that, but if you go, if you're taking notes, the infrastructure screen is the place you can go to look at a full list of access points, to look at a full list of client devices. Uh, if I go to the infrastructure screen, I can see a list of all the SSIDs that are in the area. And uh, th this is actually another fun thing you can do with a protocol analyzer. You can uh, see what networks people's devices are looking for, what networks people's devices are probing for. For example, you know, someone in here has a, uh, a network, actually, maybe it's not that easy to see for you all, 
Uh, but someone in here has a network named Mike Ferguson's network, and their device is looking for the SSID of Mike Ferguson's network uh, right now. And um, you know, you can see that in a protocol analyzer. That, that's a little bit of a hackerish thing to do, but it's it's an interesting thing that you can see with an analyzer. Uh, but in my case here, if I go under the Hyatt meeting network, if I look at the network that uh, that we have here, I can look at all of my access points. There's a, looks like about eight or nine access points that are using the Hyatt meeting SSID. And on the right hand side of Air Magnet, I can quickly set the statistic to be TX total percent total. So again, for those of you who may be taking notes on this, and again, my apologies for the screen resolution issues, uh, but, but if you're taking notes on this in Air Magnet, you can go to the infrastructure screen, you can uh, look at your access points listed by SSID, and on the lower right-hand corner, you can change the statistics to be TX total percent total. Uh, when you change the statistics to be TX total percent total, one of the statistics it shows you is the retry frame percentage. Right now on this access point that I'm currently clicked on, the, tra the retry transmit percentage is about 40%. Uh, 40% is a, an extremely high number in an environment like this in a conference center. You would hope to be 10% or below. The, sometimes, well, you know, we have a pretty big crowd in here, so seeing the number bleed up to 20% to 25% would not be particularly unusual. That would not necessarily be cause for alarm. But if I'm seeing 40%, that is a definite cause for alarm. That's telling me that uh, this, this network is likely not to be very resilient if things get more difficult. If more people turn on devices, or if people start moving, or if there's uh, more smartphones that turn on, smartphones are, are devices that don't support the MIMO technology, so they're less efficient on the channel. Smart, smartphones tend to cause a little bit more damage to the channel than tablets or laptops do. So if we got a higher percentage of smartphones, or if we got more people in here, if we had more movement, uh, there's an excellent chance that this particular access point uh, that I have selected here would, would probably not uh, uh, function quite as well. Okay. Uh, getting back to the point about matching transmit power though, one of the nice things I can do with the Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer is I can look at the list of client stations that are associated with the access point and I can just quickly click through and check the different retry percentages. I click through and I see here's a client uh, with 25% retries, a client with 13% retries, 10% retries. The, the big thing I'm noticing there is that almost every client in here has a much lower transmit retry percentage than the access point has. So the data that's coming down from access points has a ton of errors right now. The data that's going up from our client devices has relatively few errors. And what that tells me is the Pico cell is killing the Wi-Fi in here. Pico cells are usually gonna be suboptimal for performance. They're usually gonna cause your network to support less users, support less bandwidth, just not be as resilient when the network gets put under stress. And this is a, a sign that that's the likely issue that the Hyatt has here is most likely they have too low of a transmit power on their access points it's causing 40% of the traffic sent by the access point to be wasted channel time, to be a, a retransmitted packet that just has to be sent over again because it wasn't successful. And so this is a great way to identify a, a problem that Hyatt has here. Now, whether Hyatt wants to solve the problem is up for them. They uh, up to them. They may be committed to Pico cells, or you know, they may have political issues. You know, I bought eight access points. I don't want to turn off five of them, and you know, I, so I don't want to raise the transmit power and cause congestion on all eight. So th there's always that sort of political layer that uh, may prevent you from getting the optimal technological solution. Uh, but, but, you know, that's an example of, of something that you can look at in Air Magnet. It's, it's something that you can look at re relatively quickly. And, and this screen, this infrastructure screen, with this ability to go from device to device to device to device very quickly and see all the statistics for the different devices, 
That's, that's really the, the prime feature of Air Magnet. It does a bunch of other stuff. It'll allow you to see packet decodes. It'll allow you to seek out an access point by signal strength. It'll allow you to see all the traffic on a channel or, or what the data rates are. And, and all that stuff is, is OK. But definitely the differentiating feature with uh, the Air Magnet Wi-Fi Analyzer and, and the reason why I use it in environments like this is the ability to just go from device to device to device really quickly. And, and I should mention, you know, since I talked about a, one of the contenders, as I called it, protocol analyzers earlier, uh, the MetaGeek IPA allows you to do similar things. It just does it in a more graphical way. I, I prefer to see numbers. I like seeing the 10%, 12% little thing. If, if you prefer seeing sort of a pie chart, where you know it'll show a pie chart with the percentage of retries, um, then you know uh, maybe MetaGeek IPA would be one that uh, that you would prefer. But but again, just uh, you know, kind of an example of of what you can look at in the Air Magnet Wi-Fi analyzer. Uh, getting back to the presentation here, real quickly. Um, you, you can, you, you know, you can see other things besides uh, just the transmit power mismatches that, that, that I was talking about earlier. You can just look for which rates are being used. You can just look at the total number of retries. Uh, uh, you can look at things like that. Um, the other analyzer that I wanted to mention, the uh, Wild Packets OmniPeak Analyzer. Sorry, just a moment here. Uh, what, I, what I find very useful with the Wild Packets OmniPeak Analyzer is the ability to do device analysis. The ability to just focus on one device's traffic and see what that device's behavior is. And there's all sorts of uh, reasons why you might want to do that. You might be doing a roaming test. You might want to see if your device uses high rates or low rates when it's transmitting and receiving data. It, it, it lists a bunch of things. You know, one of the things that I like to use OmniPeak for is to figure out why an authentication fails. If you capture an EEP authentication and it fails right after the identity, that means that your controller cannot connect to your radius server. That, that means the shared secret is, is wrong or, or something's wrong. Uh, if you see a failure right after the SSL handshake, that means that the client device has rejected the server's certificate. And so you can make sure that the client device recognizes the server certificate or at least recognizes the CA and try to solve the problem that way. Uh, if you see a failure during an EAP authentication at the very end, that means that the client credential was wrong. That means that the username and password or the certificate was rejected by the server. Uh, so that's something that you can do in you know, a matter of five minutes. If you have a, a client where, or a device where a user is repeatedly trying to get authenticated, not getting authenticated, you can do a capture in Wild Packets OmniPeak, look at the EAP messages, identify where the failure is, and, and quickly uh, see what the, what the problem is. Um, so with, with Wild Packets OmniPeak, I, I want to do a little demonstration with, uh, with this one as well. Now, uh, a note about Wild Packets OmniPeak and, and the uh, WLPC kit that you all got, uh, you all got a little Ekahau adapter, and, and this adapter is a very good adapter for the Ekahau site survey application. I recommend that people use it. Uh, it's a, uh, basically a rebranded Proxim 8494 USB adapter. It's very, very good. Uh, but this adapter works with Air Magnet, so, so you can use this adapter just with a different driver if you want to use Air Magnet. This adapter also works with Wild Packets OmniPeak. You have to do a little bit of a manual driver installation, but this Proxim 8494 adapter will work. And I believe I have a slide indicating, yes, I do. Uh, if you are interested in using this Proxim 8494 adapter with Wild Packets OmniPeak, and, and again, you have a free trial of OmniPeak in the WLPC kit, uh, you, you can go to this link. This link just downloads a, a little quick seven or eight step PDF document from my Dropbox. If you go to this link, it's uh, using the Google URL shortener, so that's goo.gl. If you do goo.gl slash capital V, lowercase t, and then capitalized VHS, like the old uh, video recorders, and then F, as in Frank. If you go to that link there, you'll be able to download. It's, it's just a very, very short PDF document. Like I said, only about seven or eight steps. 
and it'll just tell you how to get this uh, driver installed. If you install Wildpack, it's OmniPeak. They also have driver installation instructions. I just found that their driver installation instructions are a little bit less clear than I would want them to be. They, they tell you where the driver is located when you install Wildpack, it's OmniPeak, but it, 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 in my opinion, isn't quite clear enough as far as what steps you go through to get to that driver and get that driver installed. So um, if you want to, you can certainly uh, uh, download those steps. Um, I'm actually not gonna use this adapter. Look, th this adapter is good. It works well for OmniPeak. It's a fine adapter, but uh, it, it is my strong opinion that if you're going to use OmniPeak on a regular basis, uh, my favorite adapter is definitely the Omni Wi-Fi. It, it costs about $100 US. It's a rebranded adapter, I think, with a, either a Realtek or a Raylink chipset. I, you know, if someone knows, they can correct me on that. Um, but, but this adapter, what I really, really like about it is it's a three-stream 802.11n adapter. The Proxim adapter is a two-stream 802.11n adapter. Two-stream is most of the traffic we see. Even if you have three-stream access points, even if you have three-stream clients, they will usually use two streams when transmitting and receiving with one another. So two-stream capture is gonna work a lot of the time but I just like having that third stream just in case, just in case uh, a device starts using three streams when it sends and receives. Uh, you had a question there? Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, since you're on a Mac, is there, would, would you just use the, um, the, um, Oh gosh, my, my brain just went on me. The internal the, adapter? Yeah, use the internal adapter with the with the TCP um, the uh, yeah the TCP dump uh, driver that. Uh, yeah, I I know that Wild Packets has that. I have not used it. I like having a USB adapter for capture so that I at least have the option of having a dummy device to connect with. So I like reserving my internal radio for connections and capturing with a USB. So I have not tried the TCP dump, uh, but, but the question w was just about Thanks. using the internal adapter on a Mac for OmniPeak capture, and uh, th that is available. That, that is uh, apparently uh, uh, available. I, I will say that in, in talk, and let me go through that. Um, I will say in, in talking to OmniPeak support and such, if you're going to use Wildpackets OmniPeak as your prime analysis tool, if, if you, it's gonna be used on a semi-regular basis, whether it's to test out devices, whether it's to go in the field to look at some of the retry stuff that I was doing in Air Magnet, whatever it is, uh, Wildpackets, at least what they've told me, is they do recommend installing it on a non-Mac device. Uh, they, they told me that something about the architecture or something like that, uh, because I, I, I have an iMac at home. I, I have definitely had some issues running Wild Packets OmniPeak on the iMac. And when I got to certain layers of uh, certain levels of support with uh, Wild Packets, that's at least what they told me. They said, you know, look, if you're going to be doing this all the time, it'll probably work on a Mac. You know, in the vast majority of cases, it'll work on a Mac. But if you have it in the budget, it's not a bad idea to just, you know, get a little Lenovo Yoga or something like that that you can carry around and, and that's a more native Windows architecture, apparently. I'm not much of a hardware guy, so I don't really know, you know, the, the details of why that is. Uh, just to show you an example, though, of, of how you might do a device analysis in Wild Packets OmniPeak, uh, while Packets OmniPeak is definitely a little bit more of, a, of kind of a hardcore tool, so, so it's, it's, it's gonna require a little bit more setup. When I open it up, it's, it's not just running automatically. I'm just setting up a capture here on channel number 48. Uh, that's what I chose there, and I'll get a little capture window, and, and I'll start capturing here uh, in this capture window. There we go. And with Wildpack, it's OmniPeak. When you want to do a device analysis, the, the big thing that you want to do is you just want to be able to isolate that one device's traffic. You, you can always see your list of devices on the left-hand side of Wildpack, it's OmniPeak under the little WLAN link. Uh, again, for those of you that are going to use OmniPeak, if you're taking notes, 
Uh, the steps would be start a capture, go to the WLAN link on the left-hand side, the WLAN screen. Um, it, inside the WLAN screen, I can see all the different uh, networks the device are probing for, just, just like earlier. For those of you who are a little bit further in the back, you know, someone has a device that connected to Cowboys Wireless. Uh, someone has Fuzzy Bear. Luckily, there's no uh, uh, adult-only um, names that are on there. Sometimes, uh, you know, you see that. Uh, but yeah, uh, under the Hyatt Meeting Network, I can look at this. Uh, I can look at this network, and whatever device I want to choose, I, I can decide to kind of do a little analysis of that device. I'll, I'll just choose one at random. The general steps that you go through is is you just find a device, you give that device a name, just to make it easier to track in the software. I'm just going to call this test device. And once you've given a device a name, you can just make a filter for that device. So I'll call this the test device filter. Once you've chosen a device, given it a name, given it a filter, you can choose to have the software capture only traffic uh, going to or from that device. So I can just select my little test device filter here if I want to. Again, it may be a, whoops. I'm also having trouble selecting it. There we go. Uh, maybe a little bit, uh, it, it, whoops, I unselected it. Okay, clearly I'm not doing something right with my mouse. Okay, I'm gonna give up on that. Uh, but if I select the filter, then I'll be able to capture the, uh, traffic coming only to and from my device. Uh, the other alternative is you can just capture everything, and then once you're done capturing, you can uh, stop a capture, go to the list of packets, and there's a little funnel on top of Wild Packets OmniPeak. The funnel will show you all of the filters that you've created. So I can go down to my test device filter. Whoops, got my dock in the way there. I can choose the little test device filter, and now it shows me only traffic that was coming to or from that test device. So uh, that's a way that you can isolate one device's traffic, see if it's doing a lot of probing, see how it behaves when it's moving. There are devices that use the motion sensor to trigger roaming, so as soon as the device starts moving, it'll start roaming. Remember that if you decide to do roaming tests, that there are devices where it actually has to be moving before it'll uh, trigger the roaming process. Uh, but yeah, you can, that's, a, that's a way that you can kind of isolate that. Um, and yeah, those are, those are really the big differences, I would say, between the, uh, the, the analyzers, at least the analyzers that, that I'm the biggest fan of and, and that I most strongly endorse. Um, uh, the question was, do any of the uh, uh, analyzers work better with multi-adapters? And I don't use multi-adapters. I, I find that when you use multi-adapters, it tends to put a lot of stress on the device that's doing the capture, and I've just found that it misses more packets. I, I don't want to miss packets, and so I typically stick to one-channel capture. I've seen people do multi-channel capture successfully in OmniPeak. Uh, I have been told that you can do uh, multi-adapter capture successfully in air magnet, but I, I just haven't witnessed it personally. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I can't give you a great answer on that because I don't do multi-adapter uh, capture. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, how about, uh, I mean, I know this is a lot of speculation, but with multi-user MIMO and capturing, what, is, what are your thoughts on that going to be? Well, I, you know, my first thought is I wonder if multi-user MIMO is going to work. Uh, so that's, you know, that, that's, uh, that's one of those kind of cross that bridge when I come to it things. But because of the fact that there still can only be one frame on a channel at a time, um, uh, you know, I, I, I am optimistic that there will be some ability or... or Maybe not one frame, but only one device transmitting at a time, I guess I should say, you know, because the access point, even though it's sending a bunch of frames, is the only transmitter. I'm optimistic that there will be a way to capture. It, it certainly might make my first bullet point difficult here. I'm a big, you know, proponent of trying to get as close to the location of the problem, close to the user as uh, possible when you're doing uh, any kind of protocol analysis. And, 
that would make things difficult because clients are not expected to support multi-user MIMO. So, uh, so yeah, not a great answer for you there, but, uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts on it at the moment. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, remote analysis. So, you know, I'm supporting a global enterprise. We can't always fly someone to the site. Um, do you have any thoughts on, on remote analysis? Yeah, I mean, look, I have broad philosophical thoughts, which are, you know, the Verizon commercials with the Can You Hear Me Now guys, uh, that guy ain't in a lab somewhere. He's out in a field somewhere. So my broader thoughts on it are there are a lot of wireless LAN deployments that are just expecting too much from remote analysis. And that there, uh, you know, my broader thoughts are that there's a cost to having good wireless and part of that cost likely includes on-site support with on-site analysis. But to the specific question, uh, there, there are definitely some interesting remote analysis products and some products that can be especially helpful with the device analysis part of it. They, they, they may have some limitations for performance analysis. For example, a remote analysis device can do performance analysis like I did. A remote analysis device, you know, for example, a VP who did the presentation on 802.11ax yesterday, uh, he, he has a company called 7Signal that uh, has remote sensors. Wild Packets has OmniPliance, which allows for remote sensors. I, I know that there's probably others that I'm, that I'm overlooking, my apologies. Uh, for those, but th there are definitely ways to do that. And with any of those uh, sensors, you can see how many retries the device has when it sends. You can see how many retries the AP has when it sends. So you can do things like checking the transmit power. But for some of the other uh, uh, things that you would wanna do, such as just checking the overall health of the channel checking if there's lots of high rates rather than low rates, checking if there's lower percentages of retries rather than higher, it's just gonna to be tough to do that because the sensor can't be at the location of the device. I, just a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a guy who uh, works for a company that has lots of retail stores, thousands of retail stores, many of them in malls, some of them self-standing, and, and that's a real issue that he has because they have all these display, uh, devices that are on display tables. If I name the company, I'm pretty sure everyone would recognize it. I'm a big fan of their products, if that gives a hint. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, they have all these products on display tables and their initial design was remote analysis. You know, stick a sensor in the ceiling near the access point and see what some of the traffic is. And it, it was just limiting because what the sensor in the ceiling sees is, is just different from what the table sees. And you might miss stuff that's interfering or, or whatever it is. Um, I think I'm out of time, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, any other, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I had one last little thing here I already mentioned, uh, trying to get close to the user, and I already mentioned the compatibility, the fact that you want the same number of streams, the same standards, and the big other thing I, I always like to note about this is that protocol analysis software does have limitations, and one of the big limitations is connectivity. I never recommend connecting using a protocol analyzer. Some of these analyzers have that ability to allow you to test a connection or, or, or something like that, test the packet loss, test the speed of your connection, things like that. I never do that stuff because device behavior varies so dramatically. If I'm running Air Magnet and I use this little Proxim device to test connectivity, that may be completely different in terms of speed, in terms of errors, in terms of which AP it connects to than what my iPhone does. And chances are I'm supporting way more iPhones than I am Proxim USB adapters from users. So that's, that, that's the other big thing is I, I love protocol analyzers, big evangelist for them. I, I, I think they're great to have. I'm, I'm really happy that Keith has gotten uh, samples for you all along with an adapter that, that helps use them, but just you know, be aware of their limitations uh, in terms of connectivity. That's the other uh, little thing. And yeah, I guess I'm out of time. But the, the are there any other questions? Yes. Oh, one more question. Uh, we're gonna go on break, and then we're gonna go to ten talks next door. Okay. Uh, do you know anything about the Edimax adapter that we got in the in our bags? It looks identical to the 
OmniPeak branded adapter. Yeah. Is it, is I, it the same inside? That, that I don't know. I have to look up uh, exactly what the, uh, what, what type of driver is on that Edamax adapter. Does someone else have? Yes. I believe the Edamax is a uh, MediaTek chip, and okay. uh, um, OmniPeak uses Raylink. Got it. Okay, so it sounds like different chip. Uh, now, you know, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying it can't use. I, I don't know that, but that's the two. Yeah, the the my understanding with the Edamax is that Comview has support for it. So if you decide to use the Comview for Wi-Fi analyzer, you should be able to. And then there's a free Windows-based application out there that I've really taken a liking to re uh, recently called Acrylic, uh, A-C-R-Y-L-I-C. -I -I it's out of Spain. Uh, it's called Acrylic, A-C-R-Y-L-I-C. -I -I and I believe the Edamax is one of the adapters that allows you to run monitor mode with Acrylic. So if you're a Windows user, you're looking for something free, you want to do captures, the Edamax, I believe, allows you to do that. You might want to check with Devin from the ComView presentation tomorrow, because I believe Acrylic's capabilities for capture and ComView's pretty much match up. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe check with that. Sorry, uh -huh. go ahead. Hi, I had a question about, uh, I think we also got a trial version of the IPA software. Yes, yes. Is there a specific adapter that we need to use with that, or? So wh when I have used IPA, and we have some MetaGeek folks here that can certainly correct me if, if I'm out of date on this information. When I've used MetaGeek IPA, it's always been capture first, and then open the capture with MetaGeek. I believe there are now options with the Air PCAP NX adapter. Am I right? I'm seeing nodding heads from the MetaGeek folks. Uh, if you want to give them the microphone, maybe they can clarify. But yeah, usually it's capture first, then open. Go ahead. Yeah, with IPA, all you need to do is any PCAP file you get from anywhere, you can bring it in and we'll filter it out and process all the data for you. And then you can take uh, captures directly from a Mac or you can take it directly from the Riverbed Air PCAP NX. Okay, great, there we go. So yeah, so if you're a Mac user, capture on the Mac into uh, uh, IPA or use the uh, Riverbed Air Cap NX. Okay, I'm over time. Uh, sorry for going long. Thanks for uh, coming out, appreciate it. <laughs>